Cool. So thanks everyone for coming. Uh, this week we're very excited to have David Blakey with us. David is founder and architect at David Blakey Architects, where this year he'll be celebrating 30 years of the practice. Practice is focused on producing sensitive and imaginative design solutions, often for 19th and 20th century buildings in central Edinburgh, where the studio is based. Sustainability has always been key to the studio's work with the practice joining CEDA in 1993 and David developing concepts for low-tech passive energy strategy models for the delivery of mass housing. So I'll pass over to you, David. Thank you. Thank you much. Hi, can you all hear me? Yep, that's perfect. Uh, yes, cool, grand. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I've just thrown this presentation together, um, so we'll we'll see what it what, how it works out. Uh, sorry, I can't be up in Aberdeen to see you. Terribly, terribly busy at the moment, um, and unfortunately, my time is better spent here. I, I did. I've already done two design presentations to clients today, uh, and I've got another one tomorrow uh, afternoon. That um, after this, I'll be uh, doing some some work on it. Um, as um, I was introduced there, uh, this is my 30th year in architecture. Um, to say it, uh, it, uh, it is passed in the blink of an eye would be uh, maybe a slight over uh, exaggeration, but uh, it's certainly been a very, very quick 30 years. Um, the, the, the format of this presentation is really about um, uh, looking at early work, middle work and, and, and future work as well. Um, and, um, and sort of giving you an idea of, of what's important to me in terms of architecture, who's important to me in terms of architecture, and, um, and, and a little bit about my architecture at the same time. So um, I, I was at uh, Edinburgh College of Art in 1982 to 1988, um, left in 88. So this is, this is um, some uh, sketch excerpts from, um, from my final year's um, projects. Um, we, I can't remember, were we given sites or did we choose sites? I, 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 I find it hard to remember. Anyway, we went up to Orkney. Uh, we thought that was a, a good place to go. And we went to a place called St. Margaret's Hope, which is on uh, one of the outer islands. It's not on the main island, but you, you access it across the, uh, the Churchill barriers, the barriers that were built to link uh, several islands in the, in, in the north of the archipelago. Uh, to prevent submarines from getting into the 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 with the, the the anchorage for the for the fleets, um, so St Margaret's Hope is a, is a is a wonderful place. Um, very very, um, uh, you know, it's just it's just it's just rocks, rock and sky and sea. So it's uh, it's just the the bare minimum of 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 what we sort of think of as architecture but it's all shaped and formed to respond to its its situation its climate its use at the time um this uh, this little we did i did for the final uh, project and these are just the sketches of it not the final presentation drawings um you've got to remember that in 1987 this was this was before autocad was invented um so we're hand drawing um the the uh, you know everything that we're doing uh, there was a photocopier and there was printers in the uh, in the in the art college but um everything is hand drawn um chose a site uh which was an abandoned building uh, in a ruinous state on the edge of a small scare a small square an open space that uh, was at the margin between the village itself and the sea um, so the, that image on the left hand side there, uh, the, the blue dapple, that's the, that's the sea with the waves rolling in, and my building is immediately to the left of that. Um, it, was, it was abandoned, it was empty, needed to give it some, some, some use, so it was, I decided it was going to become uh, a laundrette, a functional um, um, building that society can use on the ground floor, and uh, a meeting room for the um, for the, the South Ronaldsey Farmers Association on, on, on the top. Um, building was ruinous. It wasn't very tall. How do you, how do you put two stories into it? Well, we raise the roof. So it's how we go about raising the roof that allows the story of the building to be read from its previous use to its new use. Um, you know, I, I guess I guess we all got we all get drawn into um, um, stylized 
um, architecture at times, but um, I, I set off doing this and it was about taking the original stone form of the building and molding it to, uh, to, 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 to its new use. Um, curved roof and top, uh, clear story lighting between a new wall head so that we could still see the the, um, the hipped gable of the building in its in its um, in its masonry, but forming the 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 roof of it into a curve, putting up new stairs to access the the um, the, up, the upper floor and the outside, but expressing it in a way which is structurally referent you know is structurally um, obvious. Um, hand drawn all on tracing paper, uh, some. Um, um, color added to it afterwards to, to, to help explain it to both myself and anybody else that uh, this was being presented to. Um, all very expressive in terms of its, uh, its materials, its, its, its uh, construction. And on the left hand side, I've put in these little, um, uh, little smaller pictures um, as a discussion point. I'm not, there's no feedback um, during this presentation, but you know scribble some questions down and we can speak about, speak about it afterwards. Heavily influenced by Carlo Scarpa, especially the Castle Vecchio um, project. Uh, you know, his, his approach to putting materials together, putting new materials with old materials, uh, really did make the hair rise in the back of my neck at the time. And um, in, in all honesty, it was only until, only afterwards I discovered that his um, sketching technique and his design development technique was actually, I was, I was being, I was, I was being quite similar to what was going on. The, the drawings on the right I photographed this morning, and um, there was the passage of uh, the best part of um, thirty-five years. My tracing paper is yellowed now to match uh, Carlo's on the right there. Um, you know, again, this is all about development of ideas. So, you know, there's there's a there's a, a sketch elevation in the middle of the of the of the in the, of the, of the, the the image in the centre there. It then went on to become something more developed, uh, working into it all the time, um, exploring light and shade, um, and the effect that that might have in a building. Ex uh, then exploring the detail of, of, of the building. So, you know, what, what does uh, the, the, the South Ronaldsea Farming Cooperative, um, the door to it looks like? Well, maybe it looks like um, 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 the head of, of, of corn or barley in, in, a, in, a, in a door form um, over on the right hand side. But it's that, it's that expressionism, it, for me anyway, it's, that, it's, it's about what is it that we're dealing with here? How do we express that in our in our architecture? Oops, go back to um, maybe I haven't got it here. No, I have that the image on the right hand side there. So the that's the ground floor plan of the um, of of a laundrette. You know, most of the processes in a laundrette are are circular. They're they're spinning drums of of dirty clothes and wet water. And um, what does the plan of a laundrette look like? Well, you know, let's let's create some waiting spaces that are scattered around the edges and you could either be seats which are for two people to sit in and chat or single people to sit with and uh, and read uh, newspapers nobody had mobile phones at this point um and the and the uh, the plan form is 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 rotational um you know several uh, center points for that, that things rotate around but it's an expression of the function of a laundrette uh, what does that look like well there's there's my solution anyway um, jumping forward, um, okay, well, you know, whilst whilst we're here, um, Carlos Garcia's Olivetti building in um, in Venice on the left hand side there, you know, every single image that I see of that building, it, it just does the hair stand up in the back of my neck. I, you know, lots and lots of people are inspired by Carlos Scarpa, but um, you know, it's worth looking at again and again and again. Um, just to just to get a feel for what it is that he's achieving with his architecture, it is extraordinary. Yeah, you know, jump, jumping forward, how many years? Uh, Eighty-seven to so thirteen years. It is eighteen years, and um, this was a, a commission for very very nice clients up in the, uh, the sort of wealthy area of. Um, uh, just beyond Morningside in Edinburgh, 
up in Hermitage Gardens, and uh, very, very conservative clients. And I, I am, um, with well, a small C that is, and uh, I was warned that, you know, they'd be looking for something very traditional and very, uh, you know, very low key. So I came, I, I analyzed the site and it struck me that their garden is on the, is, is basically north facing. And all the sun was coming from the far side of this curved structure that you can see in the right hand side there. Um, so, and they wanted a new family living space that connected their Edwardian house with this great big garden that you can see here. And it struck me that, well, actually anything that we build here is just going to be north facing. So it's going to be full of cold north light and not really a decent family living space. How do we, how do we, how do we, you know, um, uh, deal with that? How do we, how do we improve upon that? And I'd recalled seeing images of, um, of Ralph Erskine's buildings, uh, a big, uh, he's a, a big hero of mine, Ralph Erskine. You should work, you've got to have a look at his um, his work from start to finish. But uh, I recall seeing these light scoops on the left hand side, the small image on the left hand side. You'll see a, a series of light uh, scoops sticking up above this sports hall. This one is in um, is in Helsinki, uh, and this is a hospital. On the, the little image on the left hand side is a hospital in Helsinki. And what Ralph Erskine did was he recognized that in the Nordic countries, light was, um, was quite hard to come by, especially in the winter time when, the, when the, the sun was very low. So he put a series of, series of structures like these curved light scoops, reflective surfaces up in the roofs with um, um, roof lights down below them. And that way he could encourage the warm hues of south light and the east light. So there's, there's, there are two light scoops on top of that building on the left hand side there, down into the, into the, 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 the sort of the, uh, the main spaces or, or, or the important spaces in the, in the sports hall. And I thought, well, that's a solution that we can, we can work with here in, in Hermitage, the, the Hermitage Gardens. So this big um, stainless steel clad reflective surface um, sticks its head up above the next door neighbor's uh, outshoot and allows light to be collected and reflected down through a frameless glass structure into the living space down below. And um, so that's what we're looking at here. Um, on the left hand side, these are curved glue lamp beams, which um, uh, at the time, the only place that we could find people to make them was in um, France. So these um, um, one, two, three, four, five, um, glue lamp beams were bolted into the ground in it using uh, steel plates and um, standing up, I can't remember, I think it's something like eight meters, and then uh, linked together and bolted back to the superstructure using these two white um, steel sections that you can see below the, the frameless glass, the frameless glazing up above it. And, um, you know, it, it Oop, there's a very colorful one, but there's so on the right hand side there, that's the space, that's a north facing space effectively, with warm southerly light being reflected down into it. And it was it was so effective that when you walk through that space, you could see your shadow uh, on the on the floor down below, there was this uh, sort of the, the, the volume of light coming in. Um, there's the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, five glue lamp beams, the curved reflective surface. Um, frameless glass behind it. Um, the the struct in, within inside you can see a second story, and that is a a, a study, um, which also then benefits from the southerly light uh, coming in there. And then this is a, a utility room, a timber-clad utility room at the far at the, at the near end here. And that little slot window that you can see there, that was um, positioned at exactly. Um, the my my client's eye level, so that when she was in there, she could uh, she could see out into the garden. Uh, we measured her uh, measured her height to her eyes one day and got that absolutely right. Um, the 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 little image on the left hand side there that's uh, Ralph Erskine uh, designing a a, a hospital. So, um, it's a it's meeting rooms and a hospital, also in Helsinki. Um, so a slightly different form of light reflector, but uh, doing exactly the same the same job. Um, uh, again, over on the left hand side here, here's Alvar um town uh, um, townhouse at uh, Saint Alu in Finland. Um, probably my my favourite bit of architecture 
um, in, 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 in modern architecture, I would say. And it was, it was the revelation to me here was that the, the elevation uh, at below on the left hand side there, I read a, a paper on it uh, pointing out how he'd used classical proportioning to come um, up with that elevation, the central part of that elevation. And they explained using uh, draft lines and um, um, circles and uh, diagonal lines how uh, the uh, the golden section has been woven into that. And I also saw I saw a similar sort of uh, paper on on how um, Corbusier used classical proportioning uh, in his architecture as well. And you know it becomes it's perfectly obvious. You know the, the Greeks and the Romans. Um, developed their architecture in 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 such detail um and in such you know just finessed it so much and you know we we people appreciate classical architecture and on a, on a subliminal level they're appreciating the, the 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 composition and the shapes of the architecture these guys alto and corbusier knew that so you know, why reinvent the wheel twice so the building on the right hand side here each of the gaps in between the, 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 the glue lamb columns are golden sections as it happens. And when you take a step back uh, from, you know, if I go back to here, um, the, 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 the stainless steel, curved stainless steel section on top there is, uh, is a square and a half sitting on top of five uh, golden rectangles. You know, I don't know whether that's the, um, you know, con I don't know if it contributes to the su success of the building, but, um, but you know, I, I'm, all of our architecture since then, since since the earlier days, in actual fact, has the has classical proportioning woven into it in some shape or form. Um, this building has now been demolished. Um, it was, the house was sold three or four times, uh, and when the fourth um, person bought the house, uh, they they wanted something different, so this was demolished. This is the first project we ever won an award for, as it happens. Um, and it's been replaced with a, a very, very, very dull timber box. Um, I won't say more about that. Um, beautifully made by, uh, by a building contractor. All the, 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 the tiles on the floor uh, are, are perfectly aligned on the legs of the, of the, the curve, the, the glue lamb legs and the, and the curve section. And the lines follow through to the, the paving out, outside. So the whole thing is coordinated and sized so that uh, the whole thing works together. Not everybody appreciates that clearly. Moving on, um, he, we've, so we've come forward uh, 11 years. Um, here's a project um, for which, is, which, which trebled the floor area of a very small semi-detached bungalow in one of the suburb, suburbs of Edinburgh. Um, lovely clients again. Um, they, um, she, she's, she's Swedish, he is Scottish, um, but they wanted, they've got a great appreciation of, of uh, mid-century design, um, Scandinavian architecture, and they were looking for something that was kind of a bit out there um that um you, you you know you wouldn't necessarily see in the back of a semi-detached bungalow very often so this this was our solution here and the the the, the, the extension the area the floor area of the extension is the same as the floor area of the house and then we put rooms in the attic and a, and a, and a two-story extension on the left hand side of of the extension we're looking at so we tripled the floor area inspiration here was coming from spur fen now um, I don't know if, if, if how widely um, known Sver Fen is, but uh, one of his most famous buildings is the, um, uh, the, the Scandinavian uh, pavilion in Venice for the, the, Bien uh, the Biennale um, with its concrete, uh, great big concrete uh, roof structure, uh, um, sort of thin roof structure with trees growing through it. Beautiful, beautiful building. But the rest of his work is extraordinary as well. And on the left hand side here, he's a small house in, in, in Finland, um, which has got a beautiful plan. Uh, that's the plan of it. Um, it's, and it's quite classically inspired. It's quite Palladian in the way that it works. But 
Um, it's all about structural expressionism. So we've got the brick, we've got brick enclosures, which enclose space, and we've got the timber frame, which, which expands and it, it, it um, ex explodes away from the, 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 the masonry, the heavy brick masonry enclosing structure to allow light to penetrate and to, to, uh, to manipulate light coming in as well. So, um, you know, these sorts of images are in the back of my mind all the time when I'm designing. And, uh, and, and from that, this, this particular extension popped out. So that's, that's the original building on the right-hand side and what we did to it on the left-hand side. Um, inside, um, there's a, a, a two-story um, living space which is designed to catch um, morning light coming in the, the, the front gable. And as, this, as the sun swings round to the right-hand side, looking at that left-hand image, it then setting by, the sun is then setting behind Christophan Hill, um, two or three miles distant on the right-hand side. And by bringing the roof up um, to, to, a, to a high point, again, we're talking about sort of, uh, I think it's something like five or six meters to the, to the apex there. And the last rays of the evening sun are uh, reflected down and into this living space, which then addresses their, their quite extensive garden that runs off down the hill um, out of the gable and beyond the gable there. Um, I get photographs uh, quite regularly from this client uh, saying, look, look what the sun's doing now, look what the light's doing now. Um, and uh, it, it's, uh, it's, I'm, I'm sort of uh, eternally grateful that he's still um, um, happy and uh, with the design of what we've, what we've produced for him. Um, uh, a, a kitchen area, a small dining area, all giving out into, into the garden. Lots of geometry going on here, um, um, uh, reflected and reflective uh, um, angles being used to give a unity. The, the, the tall glazed screen on the right hand side is, is maybe more easily seen here. So the, the tall triangle on the right hand side is, is divided up uh, A to provide structure to the roof and B to uh, minimize the, the size of the, of the individual sheets of triple glazing here. Um, but that's all set out on the um, um, using, a, using a, a technique that we often use um, by dividing the, the length of the screen into 32. Um, so using the Fibonacci sequence to, um, to, to give, um, it, it gives uh, reason to the facade, but it also gives it a, an, informal, an informality. Um, and uh, it's, it's a, it's, that's something that appears in, in a lot of our architecture as well, just a way of giving order without it looking as if it has order. Um, it's on the left-hand side. So yeah, again, on the, over on the left-hand side there, it's the same house, um, but you know, it's this, it's this, um, it's this technique of creating enclosure and then breaking through that enclosure. My one of my professors um, at uh, university was a chap called Ivor Smith, who worked with um, the Smithsons, Alison and uh, and her husband Smithson, and uh, and he despite being one of the, the project architects architects on Park Hill in Sheffield, um, which if you, if you Google that, well, you, it's now been um, uh, uh, completely reworked by Urban Splash and they're making a fantastic job of actually bringing it back to its original concept and uh, reintroducing life into it. Um, but uh, he, 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 was, he had a, an amazing um, uh, sense of, of, of subtlety about how he expressed architecture. Everything was about how the line, um, how you drew a line and the weight that you drew in the line, whether the line, where the line started and where it stopped and what it meant. So that when you were sketching um, any, any architecture he, he, and, he, and he was looking over your shoulder, he would he'd give you guidance on what that line should be doing. Just very, very subtle stuff. But he was, he was very keen on this idea of enclosure and exposure. Um, and it's, um, it, it's, it's part of the human condition. It's about how, our, our, how our, our mental and physical welfare works. And on days when we need to feel a bit protected and enclosed, which part of your house do you go to for that? And on days when you're feeling confident and the sun is out and you, you want to express yourself, where can you go to in a, in a house or a building that allows that to happen? And it's that, um, 
you know, that, that sort of understanding of the human condition that also feeds into to or should feed into architecture. Often people will say, um, you know, you can design dreadful spaces uh, in architecture and architecture is, is bad for your health. If that's true, then the, the other side of that must be true as well. And you must, you can design architecture to benefit people. Um, and, you know, these, these, are, these, are the, these are the basics in life in, life in an architecture. Oh, I don't know what I did there. Moving, moving on. So this is a commission we uh, got at the end of last year. Uh, and it was a very exciting commission for us. Um, this is uh, Basil Spence and Basil Spence and Kinemuth's very first commission when they set their, their, their own practice up. They left university. Basil Spence won all the, he apparently won virtually every single architecture student prize that there was in the country, single-handedly by himself. And when he left university, he and Kinemuth uh, went and worked for Lutchens uh, down in Sussex, I think it was. Um, uh, uh, Lutchens just happened to be a, a pal of Kinemuth's dad. Nothing changes there. Um, so they went for a year, and when they came back up, they they split up and they went and worked for each for a year in different architecture offices before Kinemuth set up his own practice and Spence came to join him. Um, and that it was 1953. No, no, 1930. Uh, three, I think it was 1933. Um, and that in the, the year that they set up their practice, they got two commissions, one for Glenwood, uh, not Glenwood, uh, yeah, Glenwood House, which is the color image that we can see here. And another for another uh, client on the left hand side there. So we've got these two houses that this that Basil Spence and Kinemuth are, are designing side by side at the same time in different parts of Edinburgh. And one is has this sort of um, Lutchens-esque, slightly sort of classical, perhaps sort of Scandinavian uh, classicism um, to it on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, very, very modern, modernist uh, um, um, uh, composition, planes, voids, um, uh, um, you know, solid bits of building. Um, vertical and horizontal planes all coming together. Um, but um, we, the, the house on the right, Glenwood, um, it was built for a, 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 a medical uh, practitioner in 33. Uh, they lived in it for a number of years before it was sold on to my client's parents who lived in this house for 50 years. And basically it's un, it was untouched. Um, uh, during that 50 years, apart from, from maintenance, they maintained it very well. But a lot of the internal, all of the internal features are still there uh, as, as Spence designed it or as Spence and Kinemuth designed it. Um, the outside is, needed, is in need of a little bit of, um, of, of TLC, but um, this is the original perspective that Spence um, drew to present to the client at the time. And you can see people in the in the garden tending to the garden on the left hand side there and he was honest enough to show that the tops of the chimneys would discolor over time as well so there's a bit of uh, of um, fading and uh, and water damage on top of the chimneys there which, uh, which i thought was very brave of him the house is very you know as it was built is very similar to this um um i got yeah, yeah there's there's an image on the left hand side of it and if I just flip back, you'll see it's very similar. What we are doing is a, a, a very light touch um, restoration of the house itself. Uh, so uh, updating its uh, electrical systems and heating systems. Um, th th there's cracking about the place. There's very strange um, uh, texture um, wall uh, uh, finishes being put about the place that we're going to sort out and pull back. All the beautiful original hardwood floors are there. We're going to expose all of them, refinish them, bring it up to scratch. But what a house of this age doesn't have is a, is a connection to the, the back, the, the private rear garden. So we're, we've proposed this um, this curved arrangement uh, of our, our new extension on the back looking into the garden. Um, and this was uh, I, I, I came to this um, design decision and we're about to get planning consent but it's not been granted yet but uh, we, we've been told we're going to get planning consent shortly for this 
um, uh, the the Kinnaman and Smith House is 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 B listed, um, uh, quite rightly so. So what we had to do had to be quite subtle and and light touch on the building itself. But this curve form, um, with a uh, with a, a, a bullseye over at the right hand side of it there, uh, which is a um, it's going to be um, board marked concrete uh, roundel which sticks up through the roof, uh, and is a is a pin that everything can rotate around. Um, it's, it's a synthesis of, of I looked at, uh, looked quite carefully at Spencer's architecture um, uh, throughout his career and how it changed. And, you know, from, from being the very first commission that Spence and Kinnemouth here, I thought, how would he, if he was invited back to do work to this house and to extend it, what, what might he think was the appropriate way of doing it? And because it's, it's, you know, 60, 70 years later, um, you know, when, what, what was, what was uh, um, Spencer's trajectory of his architecture? Where might it have led to? And that's really what, how, where this um, um, form came from. We'll just quite very quickly nip across the left-hand side here. Um, heroes, um, uh, architectural heroes and people that, that inspire us, um, you know, there's a lot of star architect, you know, star architects as they call them now, about the place nowadays. And there's these sort of blob architecture and these sorts of things going on. In Scotland, we are just so incredibly lucky to have actually had some of the very best architects in the modern era, uh, born in Scotland, work in Scotland, build things in Scotland. This is this is uh, Spence working um, in the in the fifties on the left hand side in Dunbar. It's, 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 it's worth going down to Dunbar just to see this, how he weaved, you know, these modern local authority housing into a, a, into a, a very traditional um, fishing village. And you look at them and you know that there's, a, there's a, some, um, you know, it's, 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 it's been contextualized, the architecture, but it's modern. If we, if, if you want to learn the art of that you've got to go and look at, at Spencer's buildings uh, down in Dunbar, down in um, uh, South Laverett Bank. Um, there's a block of flats down there that he did. There's stuff on the high street. It, it's exceptional. It's and it will it's it will come into its own as as um, examples of of brilliant modern contextual architecture and it's on our doorsteps these guys did it and the other ones that you, you've got to um you know if you're looking for for local um or, or or you know scottish heroes then you also need to go and have a look at um at robert Lorimer's work morrison steedman peter wormsley uh, wormsley i mean just brilliant i haven't got any of their images of their work here but um but you know, literally um, world-class Scottish architecture going on. We've luckily, uh, lucky enough to have the original drawings. Uh, the client, uh, the client's parents had been given the original drawings. So these in front of us are uh, Lorimer's drawings. Um, um, uh, the design as, as is built is slightly different from the plan down below, but the elevations are actually very similar. Um, uh, you know, all hand drawn, beautifully watercolored, uh, very, very carefully done. Uh, everything is is considered and thought about. Um, the design has changed slightly from from this, um, but the the main suite of rooms in the main house are all remaining completely untouched. And um, very elaborate fireplaces in the drawing room at the left hand side and the dining room at the right hand side. Um, a very um, modernist, but but referring back to Edwardian forms, it, it really quite interesting. No photographs in here either, I'm afraid. But we're, we're, we're working on the, the, the servant's wing or the, the service wing at the back right of the building, breaking through the back wall to be able to combine our new curved form with space within the, 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 the service wing, which was kitchens and maids rooms and, and stores and larders and um, game, uh, game rooms. So game would be hung uh, in, in some of the rooms. And bringing it together and creating a, 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 a bigger space that's got kitchen and, and sitting and, di and dining in it that's um the curved facade is then looking out into a, a beautiful um it's got a grass 
uh, garden, uh, you know, um, a lawn in front of it, but a beautiful um, um, tree backdrop to it as well. Very private, very enclosed. Um, we can escape out the right hand side. There's going to be an outdoor kitchen up at the right hand end. The, the circular form is, is a larder. It's got a roof light, uh, circular roof light on top of it. And just beyond that, we're, we've created a study so that the furthest part away from the main body of the house is, is where you're, so you're getting away from it all is, is a study out there, which is looking out into the garden uh, over there. So very excited about this project and um, one for um, later on this year, taking it on site. Over at the left-hand side, uh, Basil Spence's um, um, Coventry, uh, Coventry, um, uh, gosh, um, gone out of my mind. Anyway, that's his, the cathedral that he he designed, um, uh, and uh, there's a wonderful television program about that. Actually, that's worth finding and having a look at as well. But you know, you see, he's he's you can see what he's doing there. There's uh, there's modern forms. Uh, which are modulating light, creating small, smaller spaces, creating bigger spaces that are linked to the traditional form of the, the cathedral that was uh, bombed during the war. Um, and you know, part of that is inspiration for what we're doing to, uh, to, to Glenwood here on the right hand side. Um, just some of the, the, the front elevation, uh, largely unchanged, back elevation um, with the, the curved sloping roof it'll be done in, in stainless steel. The, um, the vertical element of the drum um, in boardmark concrete, so lifting um, themes and materials from Spencer's later work and bringing them back to this house. Um, and sort of, I don't know, how are we, how are we doing for time? Um, not yeah, you're, you're totally fine. Yeah, cool. Here's, here's quite an interesting one uh, commission from last year uh, that we're, uh, we've just taken to pre-application advice at Fife Council. Um, this is this is a, 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 a 12th century castle which nestles into into the, the sort of the, the streets of Anstruther. It's hidden away. It's there's not much castle left if I'm absolutely frank. Um, and it once it was a castle a long time ago. It was then converted into tenements. That it's described as so multiple people, multiple families living in, in single rooms within, a, uh, within what was left of the castle. And this castle now sits within um, the, gra the garden ground of a house that a client of mine bought. And uh, they're, they're interested in doing something with it. Um, the, the, the crenellations that you can see on top of the, the walls in, the, in the, the photograph at the top right hand side there um, are They've been added on in the last 50 years to, to, to make it a castle again, uh, visually. And there's actually a, a, a lookout, uh, there's a, a raised platform on top of um, that, the roof of, uh, of that bit that you can see there behind the crenellations. It's got fantastic views uh, out, to, out to sea. But our, our solution here is to, um, is to absolutely do a, 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 the light, a light touch restoration of the stonework. So, Bit of repointing. Some, if, there's, if the stone is, is loose and flaking, we'll, we'll replace it with new stone. Um, but we're going to build a, a green oak um, structure entirely within the footprint of the castle to, uh, and, uh, and enclose accommodation um, and use some of the, the, original, um, the original castle's circular um, spiral staircases to come up to the, to the top, create bedrooms, create double story height spaces. We're um, uh, proposing a, 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 a concrete um, uh, flue to, as a vertical element on the left-hand side of that bottom elevation that you can see there, um, with a fireplace in the back of it, um, large section uh, oak structure supporting um, lots of glass in between, and then poking up a, a little um, a belv a belvedere on top of the, the crenellated um, tower that's at the front and is south facing, looking out to see it, uh, looks over the, the harbour at Anstruther um, and, uh, and out to sea. Um, clear story, lighting along the, 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 the very narrow venel on the right hand side, so the top image on the right, uh, to get uh, um, morning light coming into bedrooms uh, across there. 
um, but a bit of fun, and um, um, we'll, 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 we'll see what the planning department think of it. I think, I think that's it. That's it. <laughs>